the book that I just wrote, a literary memoir, um, talks all about the way that literature has influenced and shaped me in ways that somehow church and Sunday school weren't able to do when I was growing up and in my early adulthood. Uh, one example is uh, the book that I say uh, really changed my life more than any other, and that is the book Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert. It's a French novel written in the 19th century about an adulteress. Um, and it is not only about her adultery and her self-destructive lifestyle, but more importantly, it's about her romanticized or idealized worldview that led her to make those kinds of mistakes. And I read that uh, as a 19-year-old college student and realized as I read it that I was Emma Bovary. I wasn't doing the same actions that she was, but I was thinking in the same way and I realized that, um, that I could easily go down that path. Uh, that, those were kinds of, the kinds of things that were never really talked about in church and Sunday school, but they were important truths, important correctives that I needed for my life at that time, and I really believe that God used that novel to change my life. The phrase reading promiscuously I draw from a treatise written by John Milton, a 17th century Puritan, a conservative Christian who was writing in the midst of the English Civil Wars at a time when there was heavy licensing of literature and all print publications and here was a conservative Puritan leader calling for people to read widely uh, and he used the word pr promiscuous to describe sort of um, haphazard uh, mixed reading of all kinds of material because he actually believed that that was the best way to discover truth. Truth with a capital T is to read competing views and even heretical views in order to really discover what truth is. I like to quote St. Augustine who famously said about pagan philosophy uh, that using pagan philosophy and studying pagan philosophy and trying to discern from it Christian truth is uh, similar to what God mandated the Israelites do in the Old Testament when he told them to take the gold and silver of the Egyptians and put it to the Lord's service. Augustine argued that we should do the same thing with secular philosophy, sort of mine uh, that knowledge for the truths of God and put it in God's service. Well, we can do the same thing with literature, but we have to always be discerning because we can't assume just because a book was sold at a Christian bookstore that it contains biblical truth. And we can't assume that a secular author um, says things that are not true because as Augustine also said, all truth is God's truth and we just need to be on the lookout for it. Well, we read in 1 Thessalonians that we are to test all things and to um, cling to what's good and flee from evil. And it's interesting because that verse is quoted a lot uh, often with the emphasis on flee fleeing from what's evil. But before we can even do that, we have to do the testing. Um, and there's no better way than to read literature than to test ideas and to test worldviews. We don't have to actually experience the errors of uh, various worldviews ourselves. We can actually um, just read about them and test them, and that way we know what is good and what is evil, and then we can uh, flee from that in th our real lives. It's also important for Christians to remember the examples in the Bible of uh, biblical leaders who were very knowledgeable in the secular uh, realm. Moses, Daniel, Paul, these were all men who studied and knew and it were exemplary in the knowledge of their day and that knowledge was not limited obviously to just scripture. Uh, for example, when uh, Paul went in Acts 17 to Mars Hill where the philosophers would gather and, and discuss and debate, uh, we're told that he actually quoted poetry to them, poetry from a pagan poet. Uh, and because of that, um, some of them were saved. And so here is Paul himself, obviously not only reading secular literature, but even memorizing it, but of course putting it into the Lord's service. And that's an example that we should follow.